I don't know about you guys, but when I go to the gas station, pump gas, it sucks. Inflation nation, lunchflation, meatflation, boozeflation, shrinkflation. Time to address the elephant in the room. Inflation. With prices soaring at a record high pace in the US, everybody is quick to point fingers. It's Biden's fault, it's Trump's fault, it's Jeff Bezos' fault, and so on. The reality is a little bit more complex. So today, we're going to unpack the real reasons behind inflation so you can get a better picture of what the hell is going on. Check it out. To start, I just want to give you guys a quick crash course on basic economics. To oversimplify, inflation is an economic phenomenon where prices in a given market start rising. This happens when there's too much demand and not enough supply. When people have money to buy stuff, but there's not enough stuff to buy, the prices go up. For example, let's say everyone in the US all of a sudden gets $10 million in their bank account. What will we spend it on? Well, people will start spending money on luxury cars, for example. So 220 million people all of a sudden want to buy a luxury car, but there are only 1 million luxury cars currently available to purchase. Thus, the prices of those cars will start to go up. So for prices to go up and inflation to happen, the formula has two main parts. Too much money in our hands and not enough stuff to buy. What is happening in the US is the perfect storm of economic factors influencing both parts of that equation. The right tends to focus on the too much money part of that equation, blaming Biden for pumping over $6 trillion of stimulus into the economy. Sure, during the pandemic, a lot of money was given out to help suffering families, and that did have an effect on inflation. But a lot of economists would argue that it was a necessary evil. A lot of low-income families lost their livelihoods, and without government intervention, an economic recession was inevitable. Could the money have been targeted? Sure. But once again, this is only one of the factors that is currently contributing to the high inflation rate. Putting all the blame on the demand side of the, of the equation is simply just wrong. Although the $6 trillion pumped into the economy was a factor, let's take a closer look at the supply side of things. Remember the $10 million in our bank account? We all wanted a luxury car. If there was 220 million luxury cars to go around, we wouldn't have a problem. But because there's only 1 million to the 220 million that want to buy one, prices skyrocket. A lot of goods sold in the US are produced in China. During the pandemic, a bunch of factories shut down or were producing at a much lower rate. That created a shortage in the supply side. For example, you're, you will remember the baby food shortage. It occurred a while back. People had money to buy baby food, but because the production slowdowns, there wasn't enough to go around. The logical step was to boost the prices of baby food, and that's what you're seeing today. Now, on to blaming the guy we all love to hate, Putin. Biden stated that inflation is Putin's fault. Once again, as for all of the arguments above, he is right on some level, but wrong on so many other levels. Inflation started way before the conflict in the Ukraine began. Prices have been going up steadily for over a year, which is well before the conflict began. But yes, since we have imposed economic sanctions and stopped supply from Russian goods, most importantly energy and some commodities like wheat or fertilizer, the supply side once again took a hit and prices skyrocketed. Putin definitely added fuel to the fire, but he did not start it. The same goes for corporations. Companies aren't responsible for causing inflation per se, but they will definitely use it to their advantage. They have pumped up prices and gotten record-breaking profits. But this is nothing new. We've all known that companies will shamelessly boost their profits if they can for decades now. They've been doing just that. If you made it this far, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead, I'll wait. Do it now. Okay. To recap, inflation happens when there's a lot of money to buy stuff, but not enough stuff to buy. It started as an aftershock of the pandemic during which the government gave us stimulus money, so we have more money in our pockets, and because of the pandemic, production was slowed down, so not enough stuff to buy. This was then compounded by corporations raising prices more than they had to to boost their profits and the conflict in the Ukraine stopping us from buying goods and energy from Russia. Not one entity or person is solely responsible for the higher prices today. Now that we got that out of the way, 
what can be done? Well, a lot of people are looking towards the Federal Reserve for solutions. Ultimately, they are responsible for regulating fiscal policies, which can counteract inflation. How the Fed does this is by boosting interest rates. Banks that borrow money now will have to do them at a higher interest rate, a cost that they're going to pass along to the consumer, which in terms makes things like credit cards and mortgages more expensive, so we are more inclined to save money. So when it comes to the demand side of the equation, Fed has some huge pull. A lot of economists and even the Fed chairman himself have admitted that they were late. They should have been boosting the interest rate as the stimulus was rolling out, but they waited too long and now have to deal with the consequences. To be fair, a couple of days ago, they once again boosted the interest rate 0.75%, and it now stands at 3.75. They've also forecasted that by the end of the year, they'll boost it once more up to about 42 Five. So now we have a better grasp of what's going on and a macroeconomic context of the market. But ultimately, a lot of businesses, especially small and medium ones, are suffering because of it. So what can you do? What can a business do during these volatile times to continue to grow? If you have some cool strategies that you have implemented, please let me know in the comments section below. I would love to read them. Well, the first and the simplest thing you can do is to boost your price. If you can't beat them, join them. A lot of companies are raising their prices in every industry, including ours, SAS. We have seen our costs go up for service subscriptions, and at some point we realize that we have to raise our own prices to combat those growing costs. It's a no-brainer. The other thing you can do is monetize short-term opportunities. Try to get cash in now versus hardball negotiating for better terms in the future. Ultimately, cash is king in these economic times, so the more you have, the better. The second thing you can do is reassess your suppliers. Take a step back and analyze what you are buying and from who. Try to understand where you are most vulnerable and shore up those relationships. If you have a long-term relationship with a certain partner, then leverage that during negotiations and try to keep the price increase to a minimum. If you have enough cash on hand or have an investment round coming up, assess whether purchasing your key supplier is feasible. Buying out your supply chain is a great way Way to control your prices during times of inflation. Look for new suppliers that might be able to get you what you need at a lower price. I'm a believer that a crisis is a terrible thing to waste, and that goes especially for small and medium businesses. Planning for the worst becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you plan for a recession, if you plan for your company to get smaller, then you will get smaller. Thanks for sticking around, guys. See you next week.